क्लास ट्वेल्व बोर्ड एग्जाम आर जस्ट फ्यू मंथ्स अवे आर यू रेडी टू एस सी बी एस ई मैथमेटिक्स विथ अ वुपिंग नाइनटी नाइन स्कोर आउट ऑफ हंड्रेड इन योर ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी फाइव बोर्ड एग्जाम इवन इफ यू हैव नॉट स्टार्टेड योर मैथमेटिक्स प्रिपेरेशन नो वरीज दिस वीडियो इज डिजाइन टू हेल्प यू टू नेविगेट टू द पाथ ऑफ योर सक्सेस टू एसिंग द के स्टडीज क्वेश्चन दट आर देर इन योर मैथमेटिक्स पेपर दिस वीडियो विल हेल्प यू टू एवॉइड सम कॉमन मिस्टेक्स दट स्टूडेंट्स डू इन दर लास्ट मोमेंट ऑफ प्रिपरेशन एंड टू डील विद ऑल ऑफ दिस एंड गिव यू एन एंटायर स्ट्रेटेजी आई हैव प्रदीप सिंह who have scored 99 out of 100 in his mathematics cbse board examination 2024 so hello guys i am pradeep singh and i am here today to help you guys to get 99 or 100 marks out of 100 in cbse board exams so from my experience getting a 99 or 100 out of 100 in cbse board exams especially in mathematics is not a very big target you can easily achieve it if you practice daily and daily questions from now onwards also and if you are passionate to get this much let's start with this video so what is your ultimate goal to get 100 out of 100 in mathematics exam so first of all we have to understand the paper pattern for that because it comprises of the 80 marks so here is the paper pattern for you section a comprises of 18 mcqs and two assertion reasoning then we move to the section b which comprises of two mark question that are total five questions then we move to the section c forward which comprises of three marker questions that are six questions and then comes the section d which comprises of the five marker questions where are four five marker questions which are very important and there are two three case studies in the maths exam which you have to undergo there is a quite frequently asked question that will be there a section choice or will be there any internal question choice so to help you out i am providing with the questions that will having internal choice the section b will comprise of two questions which have internal choice section c will have three questions like that and section d will have only two questions but the case study part every question will have total four questions out of which you have to only attempt the three the first two one and the third question will have a internal choice between so now let's move to the difficulty level of the board exam so from my experience of the previous year board exam i can say that the maths board exam paper is not very tough you can easily score 95 plus marks or 100 marks out of 100 if you are regularly practicing solving questions if you are practicing sample papers pre vacuums and if you are regularly practicing solving questions from different different book for example if you are solving a particular chapter then after every five to six question you should try to level of the question that is you should increase the difficulty level because with that you will be easily able to figure out what to do and how to solve this question in the maths board exam so now let's start with the overall strategy of maths exam so the overall strategy will depend upon how much you have already prepared for the maths exam so i will be dividing this overall strategy into three categories that is beginner intermediate and advanced so let's start with the beginner so if you have not prepared for anything until now and you are going to start to prepare from now onwards or if you have prepared only one to two chapters then you fall under this category so i will recommend you to firstly start with the chapters that are not much interlinked or which are easy to do for example matrices determinants inverse trigonometry and relation and functions then you should move to the other heavy weight chapters or the chapter which are very much interlinked with each other for example integration or any other calculus chapters then vector 3d probability and all those stuff If you follow this schedule very well, and if you daily practice questions and solve the NCERT book daily, then you should be left ultimately with two to three weeks afterwards solving the whole syllabus. So in the last two to three weeks, firstly you should try to revise each and every concept in one week, and last one or two weeks you should try to solve the sample papers and PVQs as it will enhance your knowledge and it will enhance your time uh, time management skills in the paper. So now let's move on to from where to study. So firstly you should solve entire NCERT examples, NCERT exercises, and NCERT questions. Then then you should try to solve sample papers and PVQs. The link for some sample papers and PVQs will be provided in the description. So do check it out. And now let's move to the intermediate category. So if you have already prepared a little for your board exam for example if you are done with chapters like matrices determinants relation and functions then you should start the chapters with integration differentiation application of derivatives application of integration 3d vectors etc and you should try to complete the syllabus by the end of the december and after completing the syllabus you should firstly revise each and every concept and you should try solving questions from different different chapters and from different different topics from different different types of questions in next two weeks you should be doing only this 
you can do cha small chapters like matrices, determinants, relation and function, inverse trigonometry in one day as they are small and require a little less practice as compared to the other two chapters. So now let's move to the advanced category. If you have already done with 8 to 9 chapters, then you fall under this category and you should try to solve your entire syllabus by the end of the November. And after that, you should start solving different different types of hard and tricky questions from different different books of different different chapters for next one to one and a half month as it will enhance your knowledge and your thinking ability and you will be able to solve each and every question in the less time as compared to others in the board examinations. So after this strategy of one or one and a half month, you should start solving the sample papers and PYQs as it will help you to do what kind of questions can be asked and what to do when you are not able to answer particular question and how to manage time in the board examination. So now let's move to the other section of the video that is from where to practice. So I used to practice from the books like R.D. Sharma, Exam Idea or Moderns as I prefer solving questions questions from these three books as they have a good quality of questions and it helps to enhance your knowledge. If you prefer any other book and you feel that it is helping you to enhance your knowledge and thinking ability and it helps to solve different different kinds of questions then you should start practicing questions from that book. It totally depends on your convenience but remember before shifting to any other book you should practice and solve questions of that particular chapter from the NCRD book and then only shift to the other book. So now let's answer the question from where to practice sample papers. So firstly you should try to solve the sample paper that is provided you by the CBSE board. The link for that will be provided in the description if you do not have that. Now that there is also an app for sample paper solving, Nodi app which is present in the play store which comprises of the sample papers of every subject. Nearly 10 to 12 sample papers are available in it and you should also buy a book or any other website that you prefer for solving a sample paper. So now let's answer the question from where to practice PYQs. I used to practice PYQs from the selfstudies.com as it comprises the PYQs from last 10 to 12 years. But you should only be practicing PYQs for last 3 to 4 years as the paper pattern was changed after the COVID period and the syllabus is also different. So you should only be practicing 3 to 4 years PYQs. The link for the website will be provided in the description. So now let's answer the question of where to practice case studies. So most of the students neglect practicing case studies and end up losing marks in the board exam. But you should start practicing case studies as early as possible you end up with the syllabus because practicing case study will help you in the paper. So a lot of students do not know about the secret source that is provided by the CBSC. That is the question bank for case studies. So the link for that will be provided in the description. It comprises of the case study from different different chapters and of different different topics. So you should practice from it as it will help you to know what kind of case study can be asked in the paper. So the link for that is provided in the description. Practice from. So now let's talk about the, some of the importance of the plus one chapters. If you belong to advanced or intermediate category, I personally recommend you to practice the chapters on the plus one that is like trigonometry, permutation and combination and straight lines. As concept of these chapters are used in various chapters in plus two class also. For example, in integration, in vectors and 3D or in probability. If you belong to the beginner category also, you should also practice a little bit of trigonometry from the plus one class as the integration cannot be done without trigonometry as a lot of questions in integration comprises of the trigonometry concepts of plus one. Now move to the MCQ part. MCQ was the most important part of the math paper but most of our students neglect solving and practicing them while preparing for the board exams. But you should practice the MCQs if you belong to any of the three above stated categories because by practicing MCQ you will be easily able to answer them in the board exams. If you want to practice MCQs you can refer to the dedicated books that are provided by the RD Sharma of MCQs or you can refer to the exam idea or you can also practice them by solving different different sample papers or PYQs and you can also refer to any of the website. I personally recommend you to practice the MCQs from the RD Sharma or by solving different sample papers and PYQs. Now importance of solving sample papers while preparing for board exam. Solving sample papers is very important while you are preparing for board exams as it will help you to enhance your knowledge and also help you to building an approach that you have to follow during the exam. It also helps you in time management and how to manage time when you are solving a particular exam. Importance of solving PYQs. Solving PYQs is also as important as solving sample papers because solving PYQs will help you to understand what kind of questions were asked in the previous years and what kind of questions you can expect that can be asked you, you in your board exam. So now let's talk about how to solve sample papers and PYQs. Most of our students do not know the correct approach that how to solve sample papers and PYQs. You should set a 3 hour timer and start solving paper. Most of our students do like they start solving a particular section, do it and move away and set the papers aside and uh, start scrolling uh, social media or move aside for 2 to 3 hours, come back and uh, then solve the other section. No, this is a wrong approach. Set a 3 hour timer, start solving the paper, put your phone and everything aside, 
solve that paper for three hours and you should do not search any question for example if i am not able to do the question number three then i will not go to internet and search how to solve it firstly i should try to solve each and every question in the paper for example if you are not able to complete your paper in three hours you should try to complete firstly you should try to complete it. but if you are not able to then firstly complete the paper and check the time in how much time you have completed it. and then set a timer that in next time i have to complete the paper in a time less than this set a target for it as it will help you to manage your time after completing the paper check each and every answer whether you have answered it right or wrong check what have went wrong what concepts you have applied whether they were wrong or right as it will help you to analyze your preparation and also help you to better up your preparation as after getting what concepts you are applying wrong and in which topic you are weak you will be solving questions from that topic and practicing questions from that concepts so let's talk about the some important chapter for the case studies from my analysis of past two to three year papers i can easily say that the case studies are mostly asked from three to uh, four to five chapters that are application of derivatives probability 3d and vectors or relation and functions note that it is just an analysis but in 99% cases from the last 2-3 to three years we can see that the case studies are mostly asked from these chapters so practice solving case studies more from these 5 chapters as compared to the other chapters but you should also practice solving case studies from other chapters so now let's talk about some important chapter for the section D that is 5 marks questions from the analysis of 2-3 to three years I can easily see that the 5 marker questions are generally asked from the 4-5 to five chapters only that is uh, relation and functions application of integrations uh, vectors and 3ds and probabilities note this is also analysis you should try solving each and every question from different different chapters for five markers but in 99% of the cases the questions are generally asked from these five chapters so practice solving questions more from these five chapters as compared to the other chapters so some of the questions which are generally asked in five marks questions are from relational functions they generally ask check whether the relation is equivalence or check whether the function is bijective and from application of integration they generally ask check find the area under the curve they will provide you with some equations you should know how to solve it and how to implement so practice solving more and more questions like this from application of integration and from 3d and vectors they generally ask the shortest distance question or find the foot of perpendicular or they generally ask the question like find the mirror image of this point with respect to this particular line from probability they generally ask Bayes theorem or they can also ask the distribution questions and all those stuff so practice different different kinds of topics which can be asked in five mark question from these five chapters and other chapters also so now let's talk about the time management time management is very crucial in math paper as most of the students fail in managing time in the math paper and end up not completing the paper in time so to manage time effectively in math paper you should try to implement the method that i have told earlier in this video as help as analyzing the time in which you are solving and then beating your set target will help you to manage time in the paper now let's talk about some common mistakes in paper presentation most of students try to do the calculation in the questions only which doesn't look like and it irritates the checker so you should try to do the calculation in a rough sheet only uh, firstly try to do the calculation aside the quotient for example draw a margin at the right side of your paper and try to do the calculations over there as if you do the calculation at the end of the paper then the checker may not be able to see the calculations and if you for example sometimes what happens if you have written wrong answer in the question but you have done calculation uh, right and it can easily be seen on the right sometimes checker give you marks but if you have done the calculation at the end of the paper so checker cannot do anything and it will have to cross it so now let's talk about the paper attempt strategy. So what section should be attempted first and what section should be attempted at the last. I used to solve the M section A first. I used to attempt the MCQs in first 20 minutes reading time only. Because generally if I start reading the paper and I do not know the answer to any of the question, I become totally blank in the paper and I cannot answer any of the other paper also. So I also recommend you to solve the MCQs in 20 minutes only as it will help you to manage the time effectively. Then you can jump to section B or section E. It totally depends on you that what is your convenience. For example, I used to solve the paper in the sections that are provided in line wise only for a section A, B, C, D and then E. Because I have also practiced to solve E uh, from the end of the paper. But it, while I started solving from the end of the paper, I was left with no time at the end of the paper to revise things. So I generally like to solve the paper in the A, B, C, D, E order only. So now let's talk about the, some common mistakes made by the students. The first is the calculation mistake. Most of the students make the calculation mistakes in the board exam. To avoid doing this, you should try practicing more and more questions and do more and more calculation manually because doing manually will enhance your calculation skills and you will be easily able to calculate the answers in the board exam. So the next common mistake by students is leaving question unattempted. Most of the students do if they do not know the answer to a particular question, they like to leave it. 
but rather than leaving it you should write uh, something in the paper because there is no negative mark as there is no negative marking so marks will not be deducted but sometimes it happens for example if a question uh, question is given wrong especially in mcqs if the question is wrong the grace is provided only to those students which have attempted it 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 is not provided to students which have not attempted it so you should attempt each and every question in the board examination so last and the most common mistake made by the students while solving mcqs is that they generally solve the mcqs they get the correct answer but while answering the questions the check uh, examiner provides the uh, options in such a way that two or three options are similar to each other so while in hurry they generally answer it a but the actual answer is b so while answering mcqs or marking the option you should be very careful and check whether which option is right and they not be in hurry while marking the options so this was the overall strategy for scoring 95 plus marks in maths i believe that you will implement each and every a strategy or each and every trick provided to you in a correct way and easily able to score 95 plus marks in your board exam so all the best so this is the entire strategy that you have to follow to crack that whooping 99 out of 100 in your mathematics cbse board examination of 2025 and if you want to discuss with your seniors like prabdeep there is a telegram group which is linked in the description and along with that i will also link prabdeep's linkedin profile where you can go and directly message to him and if you are watching this video until this very end Please do comment any other suggestions, feedback or any other video requests and all. We are happy to bring the brilliance of your seniors to guide you. And with that, let's close this video. And one more thing which I forgot to say, if you have liked this video, make sure you like and subscribe to our channel for more such awesome videos. And if you are really passionate into computer science, make sure you check out Scalar School of Technology. With that, thanks for watching. All the best for your mathematics. Thank you.